One of the things that a lot of new brewers, new sour brewers, really look forward to is the development of a pellicle in their beer. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions about pellicles, so hoping to answer some of those questions for you and uh, just talk a little bit about pellicles. So what is a pellicle? A pellicle is a type of biofilm. Well, there's some debate over whether or not it is a type of biofilm, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. You can read about that in the Milk Funk wiki page. But it is an aggregation of cells and proteins and polysaccharides. The polysaccharides are created from the cells themselves, and they have they help the cells stick together in what's called a matrix. And it floats on the top of the beer, creating a film on the top of the beer. As the beer is fermenting, carbon dioxide is released, and it gets trapped in that film and creates those bubble-looking formations that you see. So that's basically what a pellicle is. Now, believe it or not, there's actually not a lot of science going on regarding pellicles. Nobody is really looking closely at them. So the information that we have is very limited, unfortunately. Some people on Milk the Bunker are hopefully going to help us do some unpublished studies on pellicles, and maybe we'll find out more. What we do know is that pellicles form when the beer is exposed to oxygen, even very small amounts of oxygen. That's really the only thing that we know. Now, pellicles can be formed by Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, and other bacteria. But it's probably the Britannomyces that mostly creates pellicles in sour beer, especially when there's a little bit of oxygen exposure. So what does the formation of a pellicle mean? Well, that's all that it means is that there's a little bit of oxygen that's been exposed to the beer. So when a pellicle forms, you know that there's some ox oxygen in the head of the fermenter. Why does a pellicle form? Well, we really don't know. There's a couple of different theories. One is that the pellicle protects your beer from oxygen or from other microbes. Uh, the more likely theory, or hypothesis I should say, is that the pellicle is trying to, or helping the microbes get access to the ox oxygen that's in the head of the fermenter. That's a hypothesis that Matt Humbard gives on a uh, PhD in beer blog, which I'll link his article down in the comp in the uh, about section here. Highly recommend that you read that, as well as, well as the, the Milk the Funk wiki page. Now let's talk about some of the myths, some of the practical information when it comes to pellicles. A lot of people will ask, is my beer ready when the pellicle falls out? Do I have to wait for the pellicle to fall out before I know that my beer is ready? The answer to that is no. The pellicle falling out or dissipating has nothing to do with the quality of the beer or the maturity of the beer. All it means is that there's some oxygen in there. So you don't have to wait for the pellicle to fall out. It doesn't mean anything. When it comes to handling and racking the fermenter, most of the advice is to go ahead and try to leave the pellicle intact, if possible. So when you're using an auto siphon, just gently pierce the pellicle. Try not to disturb it too much. Uh, if you do, though, it's not that big of a deal. It'll reform if there's still oxygen in the head of the fermenter. Another question is sometimes that we get on Milk the Funk is, uh, will a uh, pellicle form in the bottle? Well, the answer to that is yes. Uh, is it uh, something to be concerned about? No. It's the exact same process that it would be as if it were in a fermenter. There's a little bit of, of air in the uh, headspace of the bottle, and a pellicle will form. Uh, that pellicle will fall out on its own eventually if it's aged. Uh, if you refrigerate the beer, it'll fall out just from refrigeration. Another interesting question that we get sometimes is, can you identify a contaminating or an unknown microbe in a beer based on the, the way that the pellicle looks? Uh, it might be possible to do that, but right now it's not possible to do that because there's no information regarding that. There might be some anecdotal information where people can kind of, uh, through experience, uh, perhaps be able to tell like maybe the genus or if it's a bacteria or a yeast. Uh, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out there on that. Um, so you can't really tell what kind of microbes have uh, contaminated or if they were wild-caught microbes, what might be creating the pellicle. And in fact, the only sure way to identify it down to the species level is through DNA analysis, which is why uh, bootleg biology, for example, is sending off a lot of their wild mi microbes to, a, uh, uh, to have their DNA analyzed so that they can actually... Uh, tell you what species and even what strain they are. 
So that's it about pellicles. Really, they're cool to look at, but other than having some oxygen in the headspace of your fermenter, they're pretty much meaningless. So uh, if you're a new sour brewer, don't worry too much about pellicles. If it doesn't form, that doesn't mean your beer is going to be bad. Uh, it doesn't guarantee it's going to be good either. It just doesn't matter. So don't uh, put too much attention on the pellicle. They are very cool to look at and take pictures of and whatnot. And my final tip is if you want to take a picture of it, uh, if you're using a glass carboy or a PET bottle, put your camera right up against the edge of the fermenter. And that will take a picture that looks like the camera's actually in the fermenter. Uh, obviously it's not, but there's a little trick for you. Cheers everybody and thanks for watching.